You are listening to an exclusive interview on Bass Musician Magazine. The interview starts now. Hey everybody, this is Raul for Bass Musician Magazine, and today we have the great honor and pleasure of chatting with bassist Sunshine Cantu. So, for those of you that don't know Sunshine, she's the bassist for Soul Tribe. We always like to start talking a little bit about your bass journey. Tell us a little bit about how you got started in music and in bass. Uh, well, okay, so I've always, you know, been into music and like had my little like bands that I formed in the neighborhood, you know, with me and my best friends on like the preset functions on the keyboards and stuff like that. Fast forward to when I was nine years old and the middle school came in to the elementary and they wanted us to pick instruments, you know, if we were going to be in band or we were going to be in choir. And my mom always was uh, always pushed me and my brother to do extracurricular activities. So it was like, either you're going to do choir, or you're going to be ba do band. And I wanted to do band because I wanted to play the drums so bad. I was like, yeah, you know, the drums are the coolest ever, you know? And <laughs> so they come in and they do the whole, you know, whatever they do to see whatever instrument you're fit for. And next week I come back to school and they tell me that they picked me for the tuba. And I'm over here like, what? Look, that's not a cool instrument. Like, I don't want to play the tuba. There's nothing, like, fun or exciting, at least to me at that point. You know, I was like, okay. And the selling point was, well, what goes along with this is that we're going to need a bass guitarist for the jazz band. So if you do pick two, but then you can also do this awesome guitar. And I'm like, okay, well, I can't play drums, but drums and bass go really well together. So... They yeah. got me that one. That summer, my mama, she went and she got me a PV five-string bass and put it on layaway, you know, and it was the coolest thing ever. <clears throat> and so I played tuba and, and a sousaphone, you know, until I graduated high school. And then jazz band, I did all through a middle school, high school, until I graduated college. I enjoyed marching band and doing all that, but my love was in bass guitar and in the jazz music. And so when I went to college, I went to Texas A&M University, Kingsville. Dr. Paul Hageman was my jazz instructor. And it was the most amazing experience of my life. I was able to perform with some of the most legendary jazz musicians, you know, that I know of. And it was a really, really, really awesome journey through that whole point to get to where I am now. I did get to play with Peter Erskine. Of course, he recorded with Weather Report and Jacko, you mm -hmm. know. I played with Maynard Ferguson. And when I was, like, in middle school and high school, I'm playing Birdland, you know. I'm playing these, like, pieces and these renditions of these pieces. And then I'm able to actually play with the people that wrote these and perform these compositions, you know. Yeah. So it's really cool. Um, Ed Shaughnessy, I was... Um, able to perform with him as well and he was the drummer for many years with the tonight show with johnny carson and he actually it was the coolest thing it was like during our performance our practice before the big performance for the big festival and he actually gave me a solo like that wasn't even supposed to be there the day before we were supposed to perform and he told my jazz director like you need to give her a solo right here and he was, you know, very awesome doing that for me and builded my confidence, you know, a lot for sure coming from um, Ed Shaughnessy. <laughs> I can't say enough how important it is. And we constantly hear the benefits of music education in our schools and how it can set people on a path that is, is so wonderful. And it's, it's really unfortunate as we see funds and things getting cut from music education, but every time I hear a success story out of the system, and even if people don't go on to be musicians, there's so much value in it, but this, it's, it's so great 
to hear. Moving from there, you played with Picklefish before, and now you're playing with Soul Tribe. Tell us a little bit about Soul Tribe. Soul Tribe. Oh, goodness. Okay, so we're a reggae band. We're based out of San Antonio, Texas. Mm -hmm. I live in Santa Cruz, California, so we're strictly a touring band. We tour four to five times a year. And these guys, I mean, it's just like a great collection of really enthusiastic, amazing, eccentric players. Our drummer, Paul, he actually won Fastest Drummer in Texas at OzFest a couple of years back. Oh, wow. Um, and he's like this big built stocky dude, you know, and to just see him back there like, I mean, but he goes after it, you know, on the drums with the reggae. So it brings a really nice, tight, heavy beat. And uh, as a bass player, you know, it's important to really mesh with the drummer mm -hmm. and find a really, you know, so it's always hard going through drummers or whenever you're like trying to find the perfect one. But me and Paul have a really great relationship and uh, I love, to, I mean, I love reggae. I love the groove and everything, but being on stage is like Christmas morning every <laughs> time on that stage. You know what I mean? And I don't care if there's 20 people out in the crowd or there's a hundred people out in the crowd like when i'm on that stage i am just loving every second of it you cannot get the smile off of my face you yeah. probably can't keep up with me because i'm running from one side to the next i'm jumping up everywhere you know it's so amazing i just love it so much so these guys uh soul tribe I've been with them. This is fairly a new project going on two years. They've been together for about five years now. They've toured, I mean, they've done so many tours. They have such a great fan base. Everywhere we go, everybody's just so nice and, and very enthusiastic about the music that we play. Yeah, so it's just a really great time with these guys. Anthony, the singer, he just is a very bold voice and presence. And then Brenton, the keyboard player, he lived in Trinidad and Tobago for many years. And he's just very soulful and just everybody's really amazing musician so it's just really good to get along with everybody since we are on the road a lot so much together and you know people can kind of clash or get the road madness as we call it but with us it's just you know every of course everybody has their moments but we've never had any kind of like falling out or anything like that and it's just all about the music and all about the love of the music and you know we get to travel and go all kinds of fun places and for instance the tour coming up in april we're playing you know we start in texas then we go to like new mexico and colorado and we get to go to utah and you know california and do that whole west coast circuit and then when we do tour in the summer i believe we're like hitting up the east coast and if people want to find out if you're going to be in a town near them the best place to look is soultribe.net yeah soultribe.net or facebook.com slash soultribe. I mean, it's always a good way of finding us as well. And too. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask because as a bassist, I can't help but noticing all the instruments behind you. We're, we're such gear hounds, but let's talk a little bit about gear. What gives you your voice? Yes, let's talk about this. Okay, so I'm a huge Rickenbacker fan, okay? Mm -hmm. I've been in love with them since, gosh, I first picked one up. I don't even, I must have been like 20 years old or something like that. Uh, my saxophone player in a, band, a ska reggae band, Monkey's Doing It. That I mean, I was in that band for like seven or eight years. You know, we played in Corpus Christi, South Texas, and we just ran that place. It was so fun. But my saxophone player, his next door neighbor, like gave him a Rickenbacker, a white Rickenbacker. Just gave it to him, you know, and he's like, hey, you should try this out sometime at a gig. And I'm like, you know, okay, cool. Because I had, you know, my five string PV that I had played on. But that's all I had really ever played on. So mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, let me check this out. And I played and I was like, oh, this is what's up, right? Mm -hmm. So I played that all through Monkeys Doing It. And then eventually we disbanded. I moved, you know, we all moved different places. I went off to Austin. And, and then uh, I didn't play Rick and Bogger for a while. And then when I moved up here to California, man, I got on Craigslist. And there was like Rick and Bogger. You know, every time I could find a Rick and Bogger, I'm like, oh, my gosh, you know. And then I found my dream 1976 Fire Glow Rickenbacker. And I mean, the guy's like, oh, I already have somebody coming to pick it up. And I'm like, oh, no, you don't. Yeah. I'm like, I'm Paul right now and I'm going to go get it. I have cash and I want this baby. Yeah. So yeah. that was the very first Rickenbacker that I had that I got. And then I think a year later, I ended up getting a 1974 uh, Rick in white. She 
is here on the wall right yeah. here. Yeah. Uh, my fire glows in Texas. I don't like to travel with her. I leave her there since that's where I'm based out of whenever we travel. I also have a five string hammer cruiser. In the 90s were really amazing. They sound almost like a P bass, like the tone. It's just a very deep, nice tone. I'm not sure about the guitars they make now, but you know, that's kind of like any instrument. You just never know the quality as it goes to the ears. So, mm -hmm. but this mm -hmm. 1990 whatever Hammer Cruiser five string, it's great. It's amazing. About six months ago, I got in contact with Anthony McDonald and we started working together on a custom base. He's based out of Jamaica. And I had hit him up like a year before. I had seen this machine gun bass that he had made. And I'm like, I need this bass. I need this really bad. And he had said, you know what? Sorry, I don't make them anymore. And I was like, oh, I was crushed. And, yeah. you know, I have all these other basses. And I'm like, I don't want any. I don't want that, those other basses. And then he contacted me yeah, about six months ago, and he's like, hey, I want to make you a bass. Like, let's do this. And I was like, okay, but I want it to be the machine gun bass. And he's like, all right, well, we're going to do this. And I was like, oh, I got so excited about it. So we've been working the past couple of months together on building this. I mean, from the ground up, he carved it. I mean, it's a beautiful, lightweight Jamaican wood. And I got to pick all the parts. I mean, everything. It's, it's going to be a five-string headless. And it's I cannot wait to just get her into my hands. I'm so excited <laughs> about it. Oh, funny thing that I didn't tell you earlier. So when I was playing bass all through jazz, all through my jazz years, I played on a five string, but I always tuned to a high C. I never tuned to a low B because I did not know that's how you were supposed to tune your bass. When I first got my bass when I was nine, ten years old, that's how, for whatever reason, I can't remember who taught me or how I thought that was the right thing to do, but because I was playing jazz, I needed a high C. So I always had a high C. I never had a low B. So if you give me a five string to this day, it's really hard for me in my head to connect, oh, okay, it's a low B, it's not a high C. So this new bass that I'm getting, I'm actually going to tune it to a low B, you know, because that's appropriate for reggae. So I'm very, very, very excited about that. And um, that's Anthony McDonald's custom basses is who I'm working with on that. Strings, I like to use Rota Sound Flat Wound strings. Those are my favorite, favorite, favorite. And if I'm not using those, I'll do an elixir round round. That works for me as well. Well, the flats lend themselves to reggae. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> such a nice tone, such a nice sound. Absolutely. Um, I also have a Kala U bass ukulele that I absolutely in love with too. She reminds me of an upright bass mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I'm able to play jazz, walking bass, walking lines. And it's like I'm playing an upright bass, but a quarter of the size. You know what I mean? I, it's amazing. The sound. And a lot of people don't know and they're, they're just not sure of it. You know, they're not sure until they actually plug it in. And even when you play it, it takes a minute to get used to because the strings are so fat and mm -hmm. it's just a different, it just feels different. But once you get it down, man, it's like a boom, 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 boom. <laughs> you know, just walking it. It's so nice. Such a sweet tone. Such a sweet tone out of those hoops. Yeah. Gotcha. I see that you're using the polyurethane strings still, which again, they're kind of the fatter ones, a little bit rubbery. You take a little bit of getting used to. I was just talking, there's an Italian player who's just releasing a method book for you bass. I saw your video. Yeah. Yes. And, <laughs> and he actually prefers the polyurethane as well, even though some people couldn't get used to them because they were like, oh, I feel like I'm sticky or I, I, I want something. But he felt that the effect was, was more romantic and the sound, I think, n not only is it perfect as a replacement for upright, but I like it as a replacement for guitarron where if you're looking for some of the uh, kind of mariachi kind of things, you go, this thing's so little, but you could just da boom, boom, and you can just hit it, you know? That. Yeah. <laughs> so, cool. so very cool. And amplification-wise, what are, what are you... So when we're on the road, we obviously are trying to get as much equipment as we can in whatever vehicle we're traveling in. Um, so I just have a small Fender, well, 
I say it's small, but it has a really nice punch to it. Uh, Fender Rumble 150 combo, my dream amp, since I know you want to know, um, would, be, <laughs> would be an Ampeg 410 um, with the Ampeg SBT tube preamp. And so that's what I'm going for eventually at some point. That's what I would love to be playing out of. Well, and size constraints and uh, weight constraints are, are big things when it comes to amplifiers, just because even if you live with stairs, my music room is on the second floor. So I got to, if I got to bring my amp down, it's a project for two people. So kind of like, yeah, I, I don't know if I want big things. Yeah. And especially with me being, you know, the girl in the band or whatever, I don't want to be looked at as the girl in the band. Well, I'm not looked at as the girl in the band. I still have to like pull my way, you know, and sure. carry my equipment. And since I'm the bass player and all I have is my bass and my amp, you know, obviously if it's light enough and I can just put it up on stage and I can go and help, you know, the other guys with their equipment and putting, you know, setting them up too. It's nice to, to have a lighter rig, but if I need a little bit of help, if it's a nicer, bigger sounding rig, that's fine. I don't mind asking for help. That's okay. <laughs> you just need a bigger van. That's all. <laughs> more, more space for it. Or a bus. A bus works too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And looking ahead, I know you've got touring coming up this year. What other projects are you working on? What other things have you got that you'd like to be doing? Oh, gosh. What do I not want to be doing? I'm yeah. doing so much. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so continuing just like really working on Soul Tribe. We're working on new music. We're always collaborating. We all live in different places. You know, the guys obviously are in all different places in Texas and I'm in California, but we're always collaborating and working together on new ideas for that, you know, next album. Mm -hmm. We just mm -hmm. released our newest EP dropped in October. So that's, we toured and promoted that. Our next album should be dropping in a couple of well, you never know what those kinds of things, but we'll be dropping at some point soon. Sure. Most of my energy is focused towards this project. I do, like I said, I have a vault, a collection of music that I've been producing over the past years that I haven't really released. Um, You could go on YouTube and Google my name, you know, Sunshine Kanthu, and you'd find videos of songs and stuff you can't find anywhere else because I haven't released them. And they're my babies. I mean, I guess just like anybody else that's writes music, right? It's your baby sure. and it's really hard to like release stuff unless you're absolutely sure that's the version of the song that you want to release. And I am, you know, not lying to you when I tell you I have 20 versions of like each song and mm -hmm. it's like, how am I supposed to pick which one I want I want to re release? And it's like an OCD kind of thing, I guess, because I don't want to put out anything that's not absolutely not perfect, but that represents me, you know, obviously mm -hmm. and what I want to put out. I really want to work towards pushing myself to release this music and kind of just let it go, you know, because I know it's really good as it is and I don't need to keep adding stuff and sometimes the simpler the better because once you keep adding stuff, it's hard to know what to do with it, what to yeah. take away. Yeah. And so I definitely want to release some of that music, continue writing the new music. I'm always looking for new projects and just kind of fun little things to do. Here in Santa Cruz, I play in a couple of little like beach bands, like just like, you know, little cool things on the beach and this and that. So yeah, just continue working on myself and my musicianship and becoming a better player and you know trying to to put my music out to the world so that they can hear it for sure I do play reggae but I love 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 folk music I love folky reggae or um, folky rock I mean with a mix of kind of reggae stuff too so a lot of the music that I write is more towards that genre but i love i love reggae i love jazz i love folk i love i love country actually my great grandma one of my very first memories is her dancing in the living room playing the harmonica uh to willie nelson you know to austin city limits and i'll never forget that and you know, I pick up a harmonica, you know, here and there, and I'm not the best at it. I can definitely play like the Yellow Roads of Texas or, you know, I can like do some stuff. I'm not as great 
as a musician as she was, but I, I'll have to say she was one of the biggest influences besides my mom of why I am playing music today. And that I love country and Willie Nelson and that outlaw music so much. Well, one of the great things about music is that there is an infinite amount of possibilities. A lot of times when you get exposed to something or you'll discover something new, I mean, it's all kind of part of the journey. There's been some players, I, I think one of my best examples is Paul Simon, because he had was his whole thing with Simon and Garfunkel, that was kind of the folky, that was, you knew what kind of to expect. And then when he went on his own, he started bringing uh, world music into his music, which brought it in front of the rest of the people. And of course, he has Batiki Kumalo, who also plays U bass. And to do those those South African kind of licks that he can do on a U bass, you know, it just, just kind of blows your mind, and you're kind of going, "Wait, you can you can do that? All oh, that that's something totally different." And so I think as as we get to hear more and more of each other, as the geographical barriers go away, because back in the day, also record labels controlled what you heard. If you were in Texas, you would probably wouldn't hear much more than country music. <laughs> Whereas I was in the Caribbean, I heard a fair amount of reggae and other things. And Brazilian music, I've got a collection of Brazilian CDs, but they're all, all the labeling is in Japanese. Because oh, wow. Sony Japan was controlling it, and they wanted it, but it wasn't coming to the States. And so this blending and flowing of different things just enriches, and it just makes it all that much better. It's great that you have all these interests. If people want to know more about your particular projects, I know you said you were going to be working on a web page. It's not quite ready yet, but for the time being, where's the best place for them to look? Just, I mean, Facebook really is where you get at me, facebook.com slash sunshine can too, or also YouTube. I do have a channel that has a few of my music, like I had mentioned earlier, but I'm going to get that website running up pretty soon. But yeah, Facebook's cool. probably the best way to, to reach me or the Soul Tribe website, uh, Soul Tribe, www.soultribe.net. And we also have a Facebook page as well. Fabulous. Well, Sunshine, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to chat with us. Folks, you've seen her here, Sunshine Cantu, coming to you live on Bass Musician Magazine. Thanks for basing out with us here on BassMusicianMagazine.com.